everyone. Give God a hand clap of praise in the sanctuary on tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God as we fight the rain and got here. Amen. I always look at the rain as God saturating the ground and saturating us. Amen. And allowing things to grow and move. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you don't mind, stand to your feet. Let's go into worship really quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. It belongs to you. All alone, couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Y'all sing that with me. Nobody great, yes, nobody great, nobody greater than you. I searched all alone, couldn't find nobody. Searched all, yes, couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I want you to repeat after me and say this here. It says, your name is above all. And I still couldn't find nobody, nobody, not like, no, nobody greater than you. When you think about him, you want to tell him, your name is above all names, your name. And 
Jesus, mighty all the works of your hand. I searched, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I searched high, yes, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, yes, nobody greater, nobody. I'm going to bless his name in this place. The song says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Glory, for he has done great things. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy yeah. his name. All around this room, we're going to worship him tonight and say, bless the Lord. The Lord, yes. On my soul, say it when we say, on my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy, yes, his lead, yes, his Say it one more time for the Trinity all around the room. Bless the Lord. Say bless. Yes, y'all. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. Bless me, Lord. Worship him in spirit and in truth on tonight. Set in the atmosphere for the word. For he has done great things. For he has done. Yes. Come on, think about what he's done thus far in your life. Say, he has done great things. Woo, Jesus. tonight. Winning belongs to you tonight. We're never defeated in God. Hallelujah. Somebody say for he has seconds. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
Worship with me. Come on, let's worship the living, true living God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely, a complete yes. Surrender to him and lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. Say, yes, Lord. Say, yes, Lord. From the depths of my soul. Ooh, yes, Lord. Come. One more time for the Trinity, and we're getting ready for God's word. Say it, y'all. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the to you, Lord. We give it all to you, God. We give every issue to you. We give every stress to you, oh God. We give it over to you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My soul. Yes, yes, Lord. No matter what we God is a good God. Our God and our Father, we come before the throne of grace, God. God, we come thanking you and praising you, seeking what you have in store for us, Lord. Lord, we need you. We can't do anything without you, Lord. And Lord, we worship your spirit and say I'm feeling tonight, God. God bless each and every one together here tonight, God. Even though it's raining outside, but God, we seen what we're fit to come out to bless you. To, to praise your holy name, God. God, we thank you for how you led us through this day, God, down the highways and the byways, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done and what you're going to do, God. God, we look to you for all our help because there's no other God. Oh, no matter what we search, we can search all over. We won't find no other like you, Lord. Lord, you the Alpha, you the Omega, Lord. You the beginning, you the ending, God. God, you go before us, God. God, you know the end to the beginning, God, because you are God and you're God all by yourself, God. It is you who give us life, God, and give us life more abundantly, Lord. It was you who sent your only begotten son to Calvary Cross that we might have the right to the tree of life. And God, we want to thank you for your Holy Spirit that is dwelling inside of us right now, God. God, we give you all the glory and all the praise, God. God bless the one that we had a desire to come out tonight, but weren't able to make it for some reason or another, Lord. Lord, bless the one that was going to watch it on, on streaming tonight, God. God, we thank you. We praise you, God. God, look down on the pastor and his family, God. God, continue to crown him with your wisdom and knowledge that he might tell your people what does say the Lord. God, keep him, God. Keep him in your care, Lord. Lord, for he needs you, God. We don't know what he's going through, but he pray for each and every one in this young ministry. God. God, not only him, God, but bless every ministry that, that go on this young building, God. God, we thank you for the usher board, God. God, we thank you for the welcome ministry, God. God, we thank you for the deacon ministry, God. God, we thank you for the choir, God. The musician, God. We thank you for how you bless this ministry, God. And God, not only this young ministry, but every ministry that opening your name tonight, God. Bless them in a special way, God. For God, we will be careful to give you all and all the glory, God. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God an awesome hand of praise tonight. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen, amen. Father God, in the awesome mighty name of Jesus, we do come before you, Lord. And every time we get in your presence, God, every single minute we come in your presence through worship and praise, through hear your word, God, you never let us leave out here in vain, but you always speak to our situations. You always speak to our needs. And God, you give us that uh, encouragement in the realm of the Spirit to just go a little bit farther. Just trust you uh, even more and walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you for the power of your word, God. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And God, we thank you for tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, God. In our own way, God, hallelujah, we say thank you, Jesus. And let every heart say amen, amen. and amen. Well, to God be all the praise and all the glory. I'm excited about tonight um, and the word that God has for us. And we pressed our way. It had been a strange day with all this wind and man to God. But hey, to God be the glory. When we're hungry for the things of God, then you shall find because you're seeking. Amen. And you shall be, your, your thirst shall be quenched because you're seeking. Amen. All right. Tonight, let's go to the book of, um, we're going to start in the book of um, uh, Ephesians. Now, let's start in James. James chapter um, one. Let's start in James chapter one. Amen. To God be all the glory. I'm excited about God and his word. Amen. In James chapter one, let's look at verse, well, we'll just read down to verse four. He said, James, the servant of God, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tri tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this that the trying of your faith work it patient. But let patience have a per perfect work, that you may be in time um, and wanting nothing. If any man like wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given uh, him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers like the waves of the sea, driven with the wind and toss. Let, for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You may be seated in the presence of, of God. Now, I, I want to talk about this uh, tonight just for a few minutes. The unwavering, the unwavering faith. You know, that faith that you know, Paul says, after we have done all the stand, right, that we still stand. He's talking about standing in faith, still standing. After we have done all the stand, and things don't seem like they're coming together. Anybody ever been there where you look, you, you, you're standing in faith, but at the same time, it don't seem like things are what? Coming together. So Paul says, after you have done everything in your power to stand, you look around and don't seem like there's no improvement. That's when we begin, to, if we're not strong in the Lord, that's when we begin to waver in faith. So I want to talk about that unwavering faith. Now, when you, when you finally see somebody standing in unwavering faith, they didn't get there overnight. They got there through trials. Amen. You know, someone strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We think, we look at someone and just say, wow, 
they, they are movable. No matter what comes their way, they just stand and trust God regardless. Whether they have their needs met, whether their needs are pending, that means God is on the way. They stand in faith. Everyone can have that unwavering faith, but it is through the testing of our faith, through the trying of our faith, that we develop ourselves where we are unmovable. The Bible says be unmovable, always abounding. Always what? Abounding in the works of the Lord. So James says to us about the trying of our faith. Look what he says to us in this verse. He said, uh, knowing, verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, see, other words, and they're going to work patient. In verse 2, he said, count it joy. But he's saying to us that all of our faith will be tried. He said the trying of your faith. In other words, we receive faith, then faith has to be tested. Or faith by itself, um, you know, it, it got to grow. We got to grow in faith. You know, you get faith and you say, well, I have faith in God. But there's some things that come in our lives and the challenges that come in our lives that are going to grow our faith. Amen. Our faith don't come to us complete. Our faith don't come to us spiritually mature. Amen. We have faith, but it has to be tested and tried, proven, and then we become mature in the Lord. We become strong in the Lord. We look back at, back at some trials and we say to ourselves, you know what? I got stronger. I built my faith. I learned how to trust God. We look back at our trials. That's the things we start saying after we get on the other side. That, man, I, I didn't know I could have so much faith in God and trust God and, I, and learning how to stand still. But if you have no trial, see, a lot of times we think we have a lot of faith. We think we have a lot of faith until it's tested. Amen. Now, loving Jesus and having faith in Jesus are two different things. You can, you can love him with all your heart. Amen, somebody. But now faith is a different, um, whole, situa whole different situation. I know I love the Lord, but when it comes to my faith, and when it comes to being tested, that it may be tried and true, we'll find out that my goodness, my love for God and my faith in God may be on two different levels. Amen, somebody. Now, James says, uh, let the trying of your faith, know that the trying of your faith work at what? Patient. Look what he says to us in the very next verse. He said in verse 4, but let patient, y'all see it? Have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. What James says Quit trying to wig out and stop every trial. Amen. You know, sometimes when we get to, when God, see, all trials are not sent by the devil. And if God is sending the trial, why are we trying to wiggle out of it? We, see, some of the trials, God is trying to grow us up in faith. It is the testing of our faith. Now, he never tempts us with evil. He never sent a trial that we may do evil because God can't temper with evil. Evil, But he sent trials that we may grow in faith. It, these trials are from God to mature us, to grow us. And the way you know the trial is from God, there's no evil in it. Amen. At the end of the day, you're not doing anybody wrong. Amen. You're not hurting anybody. You're not sinning. It is just now, you know this trial is sent by God. Now, if any evil is in it or ill will is in it, it's not from God. Amen. The end of that trial is going to leave you more stronger, 
a frontline soldier, and it's also going to leave you in a position to be able to testify and build up other people's faith. Amen. A lot of times you hear people talk about, you know, let me witness to you. And we look at it and say, what you got to witness about? If you're losing, your testimony is not strong. Amen. You remember when King Saul told David, wear my armor? And David said, I don't, you ain't tested. Amen. It's hanging up on the, on, on the wall. Goliath is out there. You ain't put your armor on for yourself. Amen. Let patience have its perfect work. Listen, let go through a trial and, and amen, quit trying to pray your way out of it. Quit thinking that something, you done done something wrong. Amen. A lot of times we say, we look back and say, well, the reason I'm going through this, maybe I have done something wrong. Quit being so hard on yourself. If it's of God, throughout the Bible, God have used trials on the patriarch, the saints, the prophets. Amen. And he does the same thing with us today. So the, when a trial comes, it's, 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 it's just natural to try to pray your way out. Even if from God, it's natural not to want to go through it. Because we feel like if we're serving God, why should I even have a trial? So it's, it's natural to try to say, Lord, don't pray my way out of this. Lord, uh, I shouldn't be going through this. But James says, let your trial have time to develop you. That's what he means by let your trial have its perfect work. Let your trial have time to develop you. Amen. Trials are sent to develop us. You know, you need resistance to build muscles. Go in the gym and you can't push against the air. You got to put some weight on yourself. And when you put weight on yourself, at the end of the day, your muscles sore. Amen. They're like, Lord Jesus, why did I do that? <laughs> Amen. Like, you're trying to build yourself up physically and become stronger. So you got to put on some resistance. So in the natural, we put on weight in our hands and we do all this and then your muscles sore. And then you, you start wondering, if I, if I got to go through all this to build up some muscle, I don't know if it's worth it. But that's what it's going to take. Now your muscle, if you, if you stay with it, amen, your muscle won't stay sore. After a while, it's going to become, what the weight you were initially lifting is going to get light. That's when God said, all right, next level. You put 10 more pounds on each one of them, five or six more pounds. And he said, well, I just got used to this here, and you're going to add more weight to me. God said, I'm trying to get you where I want you, not where you comfortable at. Amen, somebody. So sometimes we get comfortable and God says, listen, now let me put some weight on your faith. It's not a gym. There's not somewhere you go work out. Now this is weight on your faith. So now God put weight on our faith. And we start saying, Lord, I'm this sore. I got sore after that. And God says, just if you stay with it. Hallelujah. If you just stay with it and quit complaining, and saying, I'm not going back to that gym anymore. I'm not, Lord, I ain't dealing with this no more. Let patient develop you. Let patient have its perfect work. Because again, it's not by nature that we don't like the, what, the cost of it. When God told Abraham, God said this to Abraham. He said, now I know that you fear God. Now I know that you're willing to do whatever I ask you. He tested Abraham with his son that he loved. He didn't test him to do evil, but he tested his heart. Will you go all the way to the point of being able to stand and let this trial develop you so I would know whatever I ask you, Abraham, you'll be willing to do it. So Abraham got up there with Isaac and he laid him on the altar and he lifted up the knife and God said, now, I know 
Now, God never wanted him to harm his son, but he wanted to see if I test you to the point where you have to stand, after you have done all the stand, will you stand anyhow? Because he didn't show him the ram in the bush until he got finally through standing. It would have been easy to stand when you look back and say, oh, I see that ram back there. God said, I'll hide the ram to see what you stand. Amen. So God don't show us the ram in the bush until we stand. Let me tell you, there is a ram in your bush, but you won't see it until you stand. Hallelujah. So many of us tonight, and so many people in the body of Christ, and many of our members, the reason God had me preaching this night is because we're dealing with trials. It, it, it's challenging. So as your man of God, your under shepherd, God know what to give you when you need it. We are dealing with trials and we are judging ourselves. We are looking at certain things and we are trying to figure out what the trial is about. Could it just be that God is trying to develop you? Could it be the reason you are sore or tired or exhausted a little is because God has been testing your faith. Instead of flowing with God, you're trying to get out of it. it, it, it amen. It's like quicksand. If you, 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 you think if you wiggle, you will, won't sink. The more you wiggle, the faster you stay. When God have us in something, we're wiggling all the time instead of being still. Be still and wait on the Lord. Quit trying to wiggle so much. Every time you wiggle, you get tangled up more. Just say, Lord, I'm going to stand. Amen. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to be of good courage. I'm going to let my faith be built, God. And I'm through all this trying to wiggle out of here and wiggle out of there. Somebody figure this. Somebody. No, I'm standing still. Trusting you, God. And I'm going to see what this end is going to look like. So now this faith will be tested. All of us. Nobody is exempt. Amen. Matter of fact, you saw verse 3 or verse or, or 3. He said, count it. Or verse 2. I think about verse 2. Look what he says. He says, my brother, in verse 2, my brother, count it what? When you fall. Not go into it intentionally. When you fall into many temptation, he what? Watch this. All right, let's make the devil. He already done lost. We might well make him mad. Listen. What James is saying, when God sends you a trial, count it all joy. In other words, begin to give God praise. Like Lord, I thank you. See, that's what you count that joy. He didn't say, wait until you understand it, then count it as joy. He said, when the trial come, you need to say things like this, God, you must be up to something. And God, all things I know are going to work together for my good, so I don't know what you're up to, but I'm going to, before this trial is over with, thank you, Jesus. And us don't do that. Count it as joy. I mean, every day... I don't got to a point in my walk with God that I don't learn nothing anymore unless there's another level trial. I hope y'all just got that. I don't learn nothing until there's a trial on another level. See, I can't go back down to the trials of um, uh, uh, 1995 <laughs> that I've already been through and I've already got victory over. If I went back through the old trial, I'll look at that and say, well, I've been there. I, I, I'm learning on new level trials. Amen, somebody. Lord, Jesus, I hope y'all hear. Why am I saying that? Don't run from your new level trials. When you start saying, I've never been through this before, say, well, Lord, let's go through it. Ooh, I felt that. I've never been through this before. Well, Lord, hold my hand. Let's walk with me and let's go through it. Jesus. Look what it says in the book of Ephesians tonight. I want you to see this. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, Paul started writing, and he says this in verse uh, 16. He said, above all, 
above what? All do what? Taking the shield of what? Faith, where you may be, where you shall be able to quench the fiery dart of the devil. Now, look up here for a minute, if you will. Paul says, you know, when the Roman soldiers got in the battle before they realized that the enemy was throwing fiery darts at them, they out there trying to fight with a sword, but then they throw an arrow with fiery darts on them, and they're just hitting them and killing them. And so Paul says, look, brother, above all, don't go to war without your shield of faith. Come on, man. Look, look up here now. He, he, he says, when you go to war, make sure you have the shield. Of what? Above all, taking the shield of faith that every time the devil throw a dart at you, you do what? You block it. With what? Faith. Because if you don't have the shield of faith, then that, that arrow, that dot penetrates and it gets to you. But if you have the shield of faith, every time the devil tells you you're not going to make it, you block it. Every time the devil tells you that you might as well give up, you do what? You block it. You block it by faith knowing that God is going to bring you out. And then let's go back a little farther. And then he says this. He says to us, he says in verse uh, uh, verse uh, 11, put on the whole arm of God, verse 11, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Look at verse 13, 12. For we wrestle not what? But we wrestle against what? Principalities, against power, against the rule of darkness of this world. Now watch this, why you need faith. Someone say, I need faith in God. I mean, you need, see, we need to get to the point where we are not wavering. Having faith in God. Let me tell you, God will come through. Oh, I need somebody to testify with me. Won't he, he will come through. Now, what he's saying, what, 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 what Paul says, he says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You know, I talked to maybe a month or so ago, quit looking at people. When you put people as the enemy or people uh, as the person you're wrestling against, the devil said, I already don't want because you think of the person. So as long as you think of the person, you're going to be focused on the person, and you won't know where the real battle is at. The real battle is not with flesh and blood. You keep thinking of the person. A person is not the battle. The person is just sent. And sometimes he's sent by the enemy. Sometimes he's sent by God. But whoever he's sent by is not the person. Look over the person. See what assignment the person has. See why God has sent the person or why the devil has sent the person. They have an assignment. Now, their assignment is not for me to focus on them. Their assignment is to let me develop myself. Their assignment is not for me to get mad and upset with them. You've been sent to develop me. You've been sent to develop my faith. Because he said, so the first thing I must do is move a person out of the way. Now, that's hard for some people. That's why you're going to never win. I want to say it. That until you move people out the way, you won't win spiritual battles. As long as you think a human being is the enemy, you will lose every single time. Amen. It's like having a, it's like having a, 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 a pipe bus in your house them burst in your house, and you keep mopping up stuff in the kitchen. You don't even know where the, where the problem at. Just mopping and mopping and wringing out your rag and throwing it out the door and go back and get some more. And after a while, you're going to be exhausted. You're going to lose because you find the water in the kitchen. Hallelujah. You, you keep waiting on, you say, okay, listen, you got to go first. Quit worrying about the water in the kitchen. That's a bigger problem. There is a source where it's coming from. You got to go to the source of the problem. Hallelujah. And sometimes we're looking at people like, oh, you the source. No, he, the, the person not the source. Principalities, wickedness in high places, the devil is the source of the person being there. 
So you think if you mop up that person, I'll mop you up and throw you out the door. Well, some more coming. Preach now. <laughs> some more coming. Because you don't know what. So bypass the person and become strong in the Lord. And then he said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Then he said, watch what he said. But you and I, when we wrestle, we wrestle against principalities. Power. Wickedness. And high places. All right, let me give you this, and I won't hold you long tonight because all we need is enough to get us through the week. Listen, listen. We live in Haines City. Most of us around here from Haines City. Haines City is a principality. It has a boundary line. And in our principality, we have our local city commissioners. We have our chief of police. We have our fire department. We have all kind of people in our principality. Amen. If somebody do something wrong in the principality, you ain't, that person is just not wrestling against you. Because you live in a principality. So if they break in your house, then you, because you're in a principality, you can call the police department. Amen. And the police department and all that in this principality, everybody come to your rescue. If your house catch on fire, it's a whole principality. But as soon as you step out the boundary line or the city limit of Haines City, you can't call Warner Haven to come to Haines City. I hope y'all hear this. So Warner Haven has its principality, and Lakeland has its principality, and Tampa has its principality. And then you, this principality to go all the way up to Tallahassee. But Tallahassee don't stop there. Tallahassee got an answer to Washington. So when you call yourself coming against America, you got a whole lot of folks to fight. Because we're in a big principality. See, what we don't understand, we're trying to fight the devil. You can't fight the devil by yourself. He is a principality. He has demons and warlocks. Amen. He has all kind of uh, uh, evil things. Amen. He has demons that is organized. And sometimes you fight the demon, you think the demon, is, the demon is the whole thing. No, the demon answered to the devil. So if you stand in front of somebody there and you think that, well, this flesh and blood, Paul said, no, it's not flesh and blood, it's a principality. And if I know I'm wrestling against a principality, come on now, I got to have some faith. Because it's not flesh and blood, I need faith. I need, matter of fact, I need more than faith. I need a principality greater than the principality I'm fighting against. That's why I need Jesus. Because he is a principality. He has a kingdom. And he has angels. And he has warring angels. And when I'm dealing with principality, I call on my help. Come on now, I call on my help because I can't deal with the devil by myself. I call on my help. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I need your help. And he'll send angels, and they'll shield you and protect you. Father God, I don't have enough wisdom on my own. I don't have enough knowledge on my own. So James says, now, if you lack any wisdom, if you lack wisdom, amen, you are in a principality, the kingdom of God. And if you need wisdom for a situation, you got to ask for it in faith, not wavering. Anybody need wisdom for something they're do, dealing with tonight? You're in a principality. Don't go to your friend that's not in the city limit. They're not born again. They don't know how God works. Amen. They have no jurisdiction. They have no authority in the kingdom, but yet you're trying to get information for them. I need a principality. So he said, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God. You're going to the head of the principality in the kingdom. And God will give it to you, and he will give it you in full. So you're not, you and I are not stuck when you got help. Okay, let me say it this way so, uh, so, so we can... Beginner, listen, if my house catch on fire, all I got to do is call for help. 
If I need the police department, I call for help. If I need the ambulance to come to the house, I dial 911, they'll pull up to my front door. But I got to make the call. Jesus said, if any man lack wisdom, make the call. Y'all ain't hear me tonight. And he says he will send wisdom. Somebody touch yourself and say, I'm never stuck. I got all I gotta do is make a call. Ooh, Jesus. Make a call. Lord Jesus, here's a situation I'm in. I don't know which way to go. I'm at a crossroad. So, Lord, I now call on you for wisdom. And I'm not wavering. I'm not doubting. I'm going to stand. Amen, somebody. Every time I find myself in a situation where, <laughs> hallelujah, where it seemed like I'm stuck, I know I'm not stuck. If you got a spare tire in your car and one flat, you think you're stuck. You're not, st somebody said, I'm stuck. Well, if you're not, you're not stuck now to change the tire. Well, you're not stuck now. You can call Road Ranger or somebody, anybody. You're not stuck. But you got to make a call. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Yeah. Say it again. I'm not stuck. I'm one call from my help. How many of y'all believe that tonight? We are not, let me go over this again. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood. I hope you get it. Because just as sure I preach this message, the devil going to try to erase it out your mind. And you're going to say, nah, don't listen to, listen. There's not a person on earth that can stop you from being blessed. Only person on earth can stop you from being blessed is you. Are y'all hearing me tonight? If you think that somebody is the reason, watch this. If you're thinking that somebody is the reason you're dealing with what you're dealing with, you are wrong. Going back, way back to mom and dad didn't do that. Somebody in my high school did that wrong. I had all my faith in somebody, let me down. So what are you saying? Amen. Uh, so what are you saying? You, 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 amen. So you're basically, you're, we're, sometimes we're basically saying that this flesh and blood is the reason I'm in that uh, situation and condition. Amen? So I'm going to go over this. I want to go over this one time. We're going to go home tonight rejoicing that the devil done lost. Again, if you have anger, and bitterness in your heart, unforgiveness in your heart, heart because of something someone have done and you holding them in contempt in your spirit, you the loser. You the loser. You don't let them get to wickedness. You don't let the principality build a house in your heart and took up residence in your mind. And you're thinking you're the one that's winning. You done went in the wrong jurisdiction in your spirit. It may not be easy for you to hear this, but it need it. If we're thinking that somebody and holding all this bitterness, you are the loser and the devil is the winner. That's why Jesus come along and said, let me help you out. Forgive those who have trespassed against you and done all even manner against you falsely. Even if they're hungry, feed them, pray for them. Like, Lord, that don't make any sense. Jesus said, I'm trying to get you out of their principality. I'm trying to get you from under their power. I'm trying to get you from under their authority. I'm trying to make you free in the kingdom. Anybody hear me preach tonight? Amen. Father God, I just pray. I'm praying tonight that as someone is listening, as y'all are listening, 
because I know what God is saying tonight. We've been trapped by past hurt and pain. And God has said, I want to make you so free that you understand that you are to stand in faith. Because when faith gets tested, you ain't got no time to be tested. You ain't got no time to be thinking about nobody. Amen. When faith get tested, I'm going to preach tonight something right now that will carry you through the rest of your life. When your faith get tested, let me tell you, sometimes you're standing there by yourself and can't nobody truly make that last decision but you. A lot of people can come along and try to give you wisdom and give you encouragement, but sooner or later, you got to stand in faith and say, Lord, I'm going to stand. I'm not going to move. I'm going to believe you all the way. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Man, I feel this all in my sanctified soul. Somebody, somebody shout out, I'm blessed tonight. I'm blessed. Come on, give him a praise like you're blessed. Come on, magnify him. Glory, God. That's it. So it's mid so it's midnight. So you in your Roman jail. And you ain't you don't deserve to be there. Y'all know I'm talking about Paul and Silas. So at midnight. You in your Roman jail. And I agree with you. You shouldn't be there. But you're there. Now you can blame the people who beat you. You can blame the magistrate who threw you in. Or you can praise your way out. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Give, your, give God a praise. Some, see? We're going to do this and we, 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 God's going to release us. So you're in your Roman jail. You don't deserve to be there. Even pastor agree with you. Oh, Paul and Silas didn't do nothing but preach the gospel. They preached the gospel, got beaten, and thrown in the inner prison. They can go back and get mad with the flesh and blood that beat them. They can think that's what the problem is at. They can think that that person is the principality. That person is the issue. They can go back and say, as soon as we get out, we're going to get those men who beat us. Now, Paul dealt with it in his own way. Or we're going to go to the magistrate and we're going to deal with them because they're really the problem. Really the problem. Now, this is what it would have sound like. The Bible said the prisoner heard them. This is what it would have sound like in that prison that night. Man, we were just out there preaching the gospel. We don't deserve to be beaten like this. I just don't understand it. They just don't like us. No matter what we do, it look like we always wind up in trouble. Paul said, listen, I ain't got time to, Paul and Silas said, I, I don't have time to worry about who, who the man was. I ain't got time to worry about being in this prison. I'm going to stand in faith, and I'm going to give God a praise right in this prison. And they began to praise God. Hallelujah. Then God heard them. And he took the shackles off their feet, off their hands. And let me tell you this, what we need to understand, the devil is foolish anyway. Just because I call him foolish don't mean he's going to get wise. I said the devil is foolish, and I'm not scared of him. And just because I call him foolish don't mean he's going to get wise. He's foolish, and he's blind, and they're going to stay foolish and blind. This is how you got to know he's foolish. He beat Paul and Silas, shackled their hands, and thought they're going to be there all night. If he had any sense, he would have took them things off his, their hand and zipped their mouth up. He's he just foolish. You never leave a saint so they can praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Come on, give God a praise. 
in your situation tonight, give God a praise. The devil done messed around and left your mouth open. He done tried to shackle your money, shackle your health, shackle your joy, but he messed around and left your mouth open. You ought to give God a praise. Hallelujah, God. I got a tongue to praise God. And I'm going to give him praise with the breath in my body. Let everything that has breath, let everybody that has breath, he didn't say everybody that has money or have a car or have a job, but everybody that has breath, give God a shout praise. If you're praising the job will come, the house will come, the car will come, praise him right now. Hallelujah, God. No matter what you're going through, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Stand in faith. Hallelujah, God. Let your trial develop you. That you will be not, you won't be wanting nothing. So the next time some come around, you'll look back and say, I've been there. I've done that. You can't trouble me with this anymore, devil. Hallelujah. I can look beyond people and I can see power available for my help. Thank you tonight, Lord Jesus. You are El Shaddai. You are God of more than enough. And we say thank you right now. Thank you for the trials, God. Sometimes we don't understand them, but God, we say thank you. Sometimes we don't understand why we have to go through them, but God, we're not going to get stuck in them. We're going to come to the other side. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We magnify you, God. We glorify your name. Thank you right now. Break the chain, God. Open the door, God. Set the captives free tonight, God. Release the mind that's in prison tonight, God. Release the spirit that's been held down tonight. And we say hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for talking to us tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're worthy, God. So worthy to be praised. We lift up all of the saints, God, in this ministry and other ministry that are dealing with trials that they never dealt with before. Going down a road they never have gone down before. Walking in a space they never been in a space they never been in before. God, we lift them up. We touch and agree. We intercede tonight that they will not waver. They will not buckle, God, but they will stand on your word. Hallelujah, God. And we give you all the praise, God. There's nobody like you. Hallelujah. One more time with the mouth that you have to give him praise. Give him the higher praise. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I vow to praise through the good and the bad. I'll praise you, whether happy or sad. I'll praise you in all that I go through because praise. What I do, cause I owe it all to you, and I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. 
that word on tonight. In spite of everything, we're going to praise. Praise is what I do. It's what I do. And I vow to praise you all over the room through the good and the bad. I'll praise you whether happy or sad. Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory God. Whether good or bad, I am bound to praise you. Hallelujah, Lord. Whether I'm up or whether I'm down, I'm bound to praise you. Hallelujah, God. Whether it's dark or whether it's light, I am bound to give you praise. Even when we don't understand it. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him with me, church. Come on, come on. I just feel like praising him a little while longer. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus. Oh, glory. While we're 
understand today any of tonight that need to give their life to Christ or anyone tonight that need to connect with this ministry. My Lord and my God, be bold and take this time to come and receive what God has for you. Amen. Glory be to God. He's so worthy. Jesus is Lord of all. You, you may be seated in the presence of God. Let me, let me give you one more nugget. We'll take up our offering. We have our closing benediction. Listen to what the Lord was saying to me as Sister Johnson was ministering in song. Remember when I said we are fighting principalities, not the person in front of us? And God allowed me to use the illustration of a town. And it has its boundaries. Then go to another town. Then you go to the capital of a state. Don't stop there. You got to go all the way to the whole government. If you, in America, if you go, if you start warring against America, you ain't warring against some soldiers. You're warring against the whole country. And God showed me this. He said, have you ever been dealing with one person that seemed like he's fighting a whole town? You're dealing with one person that seemed like the whole town? Sometimes you are fighting a principality and don't even know it. So how do you win? You go to a higher principality. You belong to a better kingdom. Hallelujah. You belong to one that has all power, that can open up any door, can remove anything. Hallelujah. So I can't fight a principality by myself. I got to go to him who is greater. That's why when David was fighting Goliath, he realized he was fighting the whole Philistine army. So he said this, let me introduce you to something. The battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord. His principality gonna give you into my hands. Hallelujah, somebody. His principality, the battle is not mine. His principality is greater than the Philistine. So I want you to know I'm not fighting you. The battle's not mine. The battle is the Lord. Y'all receive that tonight. The battle is not yours. Too much for us to handle. But the battle is the Lord. I hope y'all receive that tonight. That's why your pastor keep a smile on his face. After 35 years of ministry, I'm still smiling. But I, I'm not trying to fight this battle. I got help. I have help. Thank you, Jesus. All right, to God be the praise, and we've been so blessed tonight. Musician was right in line. Our minister of music was in line. Prayer was in line. The whole service was needed tonight. Amen. All right. Uh, um, I, I met uh, Brother Black uh, Ju Ju Julian today. I think he's the only one in here. First time. Anyone else first time being with us? Let me see. Your first time? God, what a blessing. Hey, what a blessing. Give God a hand for both of them. Okay, I'm, if, if, if we want to know your name, but you don't have to come up. We, do we have that mic? Uh, give uh, Deacon Cobb the mic. Y'all can, or Deacon Myers the mic. It's up here. Uh, and uh, we're going to let you guys stand right where you are if you just want to give us your name and say a little. We love to acknowledge people for the first time. This young lady, uh, my goodness. 
I'm glad I took time because I met Julian, but I'm just assuming you've been here. God has so many people that come here that you never know when you see someone if they've been here or not before. Amen. All right. God bless you. Hello, everybody. I'm oh. Sierra. I don't know if y'all can hear me or not. Um, yeah, my name's Sierra, but this is my first time. Oh, yeah, this is my first time here. <laughs> Welcome. Glad that you're here. We did, I didn't get your name. I think the mic was a little low. Um, Kier. Kier, yes. God bless you. Glad Thank you came and worshiped tonight. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, my name is Julian. I'm Elaine's dad. Man, glad to have you. God be the glory. All right, to God be the glory. We've been so blessed tonight. It's good to know that we have a very present help in time of trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. Repeat after me, then we're going to Give the benediction. You know how we do? We take our, our offering or your tithes or whatever you have tonight. We lay it on the altar. And I just already pray over God. Let that seed just multiply according to your word. Um, even before we put it down, God. But um, repeat these words. I'm already, I am victorious. Because God fight my battle. Amen. Let us stand. The word has been spoken. Amen. Amen. Walk in your blessing. Got me covered, right?